All right, what's going on everyone? So today we're gonna to be going over email marketing and some of the basic things you guys have to know. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Juan Valdez, and if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM. Uh, to kind of jump right into it, I want to let you guys know that a lot of these strategies that I share with you guys that I kind of go over, I am in no way or form the creator of them. I went and found the best email marketers in the marketing world and in e-commerce e space, and I pretty much just, you know, picked up some of the things they were doing and started implementing them into my e-commerce business. And after getting results with them, like I you know, posted in a previous video, I then started, decided to, you know, go ahead and share these things with you guys. What we're gonna do is, so we have our email marketing basic. These are basically gonna be the things that when it comes time to write any email, these are gonna be the factors that factor into it. So I wanted to go over how you guys should see emails. So basically the way you guys should see emails is, it's like a flow, right? Make your emails, you're gonna write it all out. You then you're gonna send your emails out. You know, the customers are gonna see your emails. They're gonna get clicked on, whether depending on the kind of links you have, the pictures, things like that. And then obviously after they click on their emails, you know, hopefully they're gonna make purchases and actually buy. You're gonna get sales from the emails. One of the first things is subject lines, right? So you guys know when it comes to subject lines, they are super important because your subject lines are actually what affect your open rates. This is basically the beginning of the flow and if you think about the beginning of the flow, you wanna make sure you're spending a good amount of time on your subject lines because if you don't have a good subject line, it can actually cause your emails not to get opened up and it can basically cause you to lose out on a ton of sales and a ton of revenue and obviously that's not what we wanna do here. We wanna make obviously as much, we wanna generate as much revenue as possible, make as many sales as possible. When it comes out to subject lines, they're a little bit tricky at first to kind of learn, you know, how they work and things like that. I would spend some time basically, you know, just researching online, like proven subject lines that have been proven to work. What kind of things go into fact when it comes to subject lines? Like, do you wanna ask questions in your subject lines? Do you wanna, you know, make calls to actions in your subject lines? Though, what kind of things people use in their subject lines? So I would say to start off, go to the top websites, whether it be Amazon, Apple, you know, Google, all these different websites and also other websites, but also look at the emails that they use and the subject lines they use. Because again, these websites, they take the time to test all these different subject lines, they test all these different words. It makes it a lot easier for you guys to implement some of the things that they're doing without having to test as much because these guys, people are already doing it and they already know the things that work because they've already tested it over and over again. So what I do, when I first got started, when I started to learn about subject lines, all I would do is whip out my phone and literally go through my emails that I was receiving on a day-to-day -day basis and just see like what kind of subject lines they were doing, how they were hooking people, what kind of things they were saying to make people wanna go in and open you know, that email. Because again, your subject lines is the first part of the flow basically. It affects whether people are open that email to begin with or not. So again, if you don't have a good subject line, it has a probability of not getting opened you know, if your subject line isn't as good. Subject lines is the first one. The next one we're gonna have here is time of the time of day. So this is something that again is in your control. You can pick obviously what kind of day you send the email. Now obviously you can't control what time of the day your customer opens the email. You're gonna have people that go through the emails in the morning, you're gonna have people that go through your emails in the afternoon, evenings and at night. You know every single email list is different just based on the fact that every single email list has a specific audience per se that opens their emails in a specific time. There's basically ways that you can test to find out when is the most optimal time to send out those emails to your specific email list. So the time of day does affect the entire flow because if you send this email out in the wrong time of the day, and you, if you don't test to find out what time of the day works really well for your email list and your audience, you know, you're already gonna be down one because you're gonna be sending out these emails at the wrong time of the day, and it's basically probably never gonna be seen because these people don't even open up or check these emails around the time that you're sending your emails out. And you can start learning about the time of the day that works for your audience and your email list is uh, start testing different times. And basically some of the time zones that I learned that you can test could be, you know, as early as 9 a.m. You have 12 p.m., 3 p.m., and then 6 p.m. I, these are the ones that I learned to test uh, to kind of get an idea. But basically what you want to do is to find out what time of the day works for your, you know, for your audience and your email list. You want to spend usually at least a week just testing one time where you email that same time, you know, for the whole week. Then the next week you change and you do uh, like 12 p.m. the second week, then third week 3 p.m. and the fourth week 6 p.m. And then based on the metrics that you can see and you get back from sending all those emails, 
you'd be able to narrow down which is the best time that works for your audience and your email list. Everyone's email list is different and that's why you have I'm terrible to test. So that's how you have to test. Now for the next one, we have the from name and basically your from name affects your opens and how many what well, your open rates that you get so now you have your open rates your from name and your from name affects your open rate just like your your subject lines do so basically your from name is basically when you see an email pop up and you see that it comes up and it's from you know it's either specifically from the the business or the website or it could be from a specific person now it's been proven that based on the name they use uh, if you, you know, based on you, you, whether if you use the actual business's name or whether if you use an actual person's name, it's improving that one or the other actually leads to having a better open rate. And usually it's using an actual person's name within the business. If, you know, for one of our e-commerce and dropshipping stores, we have a specific name we use, which is like Julie. And Julie is the one that sends out all our emails, at least from the customer's point of views. And they're always getting emailed from Julie from at our store name. You know, rather than us emailing from our store name specifically without having any name attached to it, we have it come from Julie, which is a person because people can relate a lot more to a person than a specific, you know, store or website. You want to make it feel as relatable as possible. So if you attach a name to it, it's been statistically proven to increase your open rate. If you guys have tried out any of these strategies that I talked about, whether it be specific su subject lines, specific times to send out emails or your from names, leave me a comment below. Let me know how it's worked for you and how these affected your emails. And if you've seen any differences uh, within your emails, you know, within changing your subject lines, changing the time of day or your from name. Uh, it's been proven to get better opens with person's name rather than store name for the from name on email. So I'll leave that. So your copy affects the clicks on your email. So basically usually emails have either pictures or regular text. Usually, you know, having a lot more pictures does uh, make it so that you do have a higher click through rate, but also having text makes it and having text makes it so you have a lower click through rate. But again, you do want to have both. If you have tons of images, you may get a higher click through rate. If you have more text, you may get a lower click through rate. You do have to test it to see like, you know, based on your audience, what you get more of. The next one is we have schedule. So the schedule for your email, how often you send these out often. How often you send these emails affects your whole flow as well. And what I mean by that is, again, your email is an entire flow. It's, a, it's a basically like a sequence. So again, you're sending these emails, they're getting opened by your customers, they're getting clicked on on your customers, and then obviously our goal is to get them to buy. And that's the flow of the entire email process. So the, the schedule that you have for these emails is super important because you wanna make sure that after you find out what times work, for your specific email list, you wanna make sure you stick into that schedule and you're very consistent. Because again, the more your customers see your emails, the more likely they are to open them. But if you're only emailing them, emailing them once in a while, you know they may not even see your email and you may not get as high as open rates, you may not get as high click-through rates or any of that. Your statistics may completely go down if you're not emailing as often. So you wanna say you make sure you stay consistent and you're emailing um, pretty much as much as you can. You wanna find somewhat of a schedule that works for you. One of the last factors that affects your email flows or you know, your emails overall is your layouts. Layouts of, layouts of emails. And the layouts of your emails affects your clicks and click through rates. For those of you guys that don't know what clicks or what click through rates is, is basically, you know, all the links that you embed within your emails and all the calls to actions that you have and basically all the ways that you can send your customers straight to your website, this is gonna be, your, you know, your click through rate. So depending on what kind of layout you have in your emails, depending on, you know, whether you're, you're grabbing attention first thing at the top of the email or if you're waiting all the way to the end to have your first call to action, you know, that's gonna determine 
obviously um, it's going to determine your click-through rate. So if you have no calls to action at the top of your emails, you have no way for your customer to get to click on something and actually get to somewhere else, like to back to your website, then obviously you're probably not going to have a high click-through rate because based on statistics, a majority of people that open up emails usually only see the top half before they actually either scroll to the next email or just delete the email, right? So you want to take advantage on the first in the top half of the email and you really utilize it to have you know links to your back to your website have pictures that they can click on that takes them to your products and have calls to action that's going to take them back to your website whether it be your home page your product page collections whatever the case may be because again you want to utilize the top half of that email or the top half of that you know the screen that the email pops up in because again a lot of people are looking at emails on their phones so if you don't have any calls to actions at the top part of the emails and again it's going to cost you you know your clicks to go down your click through rates and it's going to make it so people open up your emails but they end up not actually even going to your website and actually even being a potential customer because you didn't have any calls to actions early on enough but this is just supposed to be a basic introduction to email marketing if you guys want to see more videos on email marketing make sure you leave me a thumbs up also leave me a comment let me know what specifically in email marketing you'd want to see more of and of course, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.